Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. T.S. Eliot. The Naming of Cats. The naming of cats is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. First of all, there's the name that the family use daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo or James, such as Victor or Jonathan, George or Bill Bailey, all of them sensible, everyday names. There are fancier names if you think they sound sweeter, some for the gentlemen, some for the dames, such as Plato, Admetus, Electra, Demeter, but all of them sensible, everyday names. But I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular, a name that's peculiar and most dignified. Else how can he keep up his tail perpendicular, or spread out his whiskers, or cherish his pride? Of names of this kind, I can give you a quorum, such as Munkerstrap, Quakeso, or Coricopat, such as Bum, Ballerina, or else Jelly Lorum, names that never belong to more than one cat. But above and beyond, there's still one name left over, and that is the name that you will never guess. The name that no human research can discover, but the cat himself knows and will never confess. When you notice a cat in profound meditation, the reason I tell you is always the same. His mind is engaged in a rapt contemplation of the thought, of the thought, of the thought of his name. His ineffable, effable, effing effable, deep and inscrutable, singular name.